What's up everybody? Today we're going to do a video about how to do resin infusions. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this so hopefully this will clear up some answers. We're going to be infusing a large flat panel on this mirror right here. Um, a couple weeks ago I did a video about how to vacuum bag a panel. I'll go ahead and put a link somewhere right up here so you can go right to it. Um, a lot of the materials are the same, a lot of the steps are the same. What's nice about infusions is it's getting close to lunchtime or the end of the day. Since you're laying up the material dry, you can kind of just stop where you're at, continue it later. Um, we have all of our materials ready. Everything's cut. Um, our carbon, obviously. Um, behind the carbon will go our peel ply. That's just like the vacuum bagging video. Where it differs, differs I'm sorry, is after the peel ply, you have to use a flow net um, or infusion media. It goes by a couple different names. But what that is, let's see if we can get a close up. It's this real fine net material. Now there's different colors. There's red. We use green. I've seen white. There's different thicknesses. Let's see if we can get kind of. And what that does is that gives the epoxy little channels to run through and then infuse throughout the part. So that's a new material. Um, vacuum line we use kind of like a harder line on the vacuum side but on the inlet side we use one of these clear tubes which are you can see it's pretty pretty soft pretty squishy so that's nice so you can just kind of clamp it off uh, when you get done to to uh, the end of the infusion so that's about it that covers our materials our mold is already prepped and gum taped uh, so that's it so let's get laying up All right, so we're back. We're ready to start our layup. So first layer, I usually just lay on the mold. Any loose little pieces, I usually just kind of pull off. I overcut my carbon, um, kind of just for that reason. You're always going to have little strands that come off. Now that it's down, I'll look at it. Make sure there's no little pieces, little fibers, anything like that. Um, any snags. If, if it all looks good, I'll then grab it. Look at the mold. And then put what we know is the good side down. Because that will be the side you'll see when you're all done. This, you want to square it up. We're going to be infusing from one side towards the other. So we're going to offset it a little bit this way. And that'll make sense a little bit later in the video as to why we offset it. So looks good, looks square. We're on to our second layer. Now this is a biaxial fabric, so that's why it might look a little different in the video. And basically that just means the threads are running at angles um, in our video we did a couple weeks ago about vacuum bagging I get into why you kind of want to do that um, it, it just makes the layup even on the top and the bottom so when it heats up and cures it doesn't warp or twist or bow or anything like that so basically that's it um, now when we do infusions this one's flat so you could get away without it but we'll just put a little little spray tack on it And that just helps the, the layers kind of stick together. Um, if you were doing a part that had a much more contour or shape to it, you would definitely want to use spray tech. So that way the layers just don't kind of shift and move and fall out of alignment or, or anything like that. All right, so now that we got all of our pieces down we start the consumables goes your peel ply and we're using a blue peel ply there's also a white polyester um, the blue release is a little bit easier but it is a little bit more money and again we're offsetting it you can see we have a little bit of extra peel ply across the top than we do at the bottom
then your net flow media and fusion mesh goes by a couple names and again offset that down opposite of the peel ply now our bagging material this is square so it's pretty easy uh, no pleats or anything like that so I just kind of start in a corner work my work my way around now you gotta remember to stop right about halfway a panel this large um, we can get away with just one inlet line uh, this is about borderline though anything larger you would kind of want to do a T with some spiral wrap or spiral tube I'll probably do that in another video about how to set that up okay so we're back finish bagging finish layup everything um, we're gonna go over it real quick and then start our infusion obviously we have our vacuum line right here you can see why we offset the peel ply so that gives us what's called a resin break so the air will travel through the peel ply when you do your infusion the epoxy will travel pretty quickly through the net it will slow down a little bit when it hits the carbon and then it slows down a lot when it hits the peel ply so if you have a side that is lagging behind it'll give it time to kind of catch up and you'll you'll waste less epoxy because you'll suck a lot less up through your vacuum line down to the inlet side we have our net in here so that the bag doesn't um, collapse into the hose and then there's our clamp right here and our epoxy a um, few things to note you can see our setup we actually have it going out the bottom I can't tell you how many times I've had the hose when you kind of just have it in the top and you got to have a clamp and you hope it doesn't fall out or tip over or anything so this setups really nice um, also the epoxy is infusion epoxy which has a lower CPS um, than a regular hand lay epoxy hand lay epoxy is a lot thicker so it's a lot harder for the vacuum to draw it through the part so I think we're ready we're gonna go ahead and crack this open ready so there it goes so you can see how quick it goes in the beginning but it's already kind of slowing down and that's just how it is once it has to fill up more you want to check for any air leaks or any bubbles coming around your line or anything like that um, you also want to check your corners um, that's another area that it'll come in a lot or if you have any pleats this one doesn't but you always want to push your pleats real good so that's about it we'll be back when it's close to finished all right we're getting close to done and this is a good example of the resin break so you can see how the epoxy made it up it's bleeding through the fabric a little bit but it's allowing these corners to kind of catch up and a good example of this, if we go all the way to the bottom, even though the epoxy made it this whole way, it made through the carbon, but you can see how it's having trouble making it through the peel ply. So that's what a resin break does. Um, we're about half hour in, which is kind of a little bit time consuming. It's chilly in the shop today, so that slowed it up. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, we could speed it up if we wanted to if we ended up using some spiral wrap Which really opens up the the inlet line and allows it to pull through much faster But that's about it. We'll be back as soon as we get right towards the end So we're getting close to the last little corner finishing up here and all these extra bubbles I actually had a little mess up getting ready to take the camera for the video you can see the trail of bubbles down to the inlet line. I didn't pinch it off in time because I'm getting ready to do something else, but we should be okay. Since the part is already wet out, these, these bubbles trail the whole way. Should be in the net. So once we demold the part, we should be fine. But 
Last little bit, getting ready to go. So that's about it. Um, you also want to make sure any chance you get, you always want to go uphill with your infusion. Um, simple, obvious reason is air always travels up, so um, less chance of any voids or bubbles or anything getting stuck in the laminate. So that's about it. We'll be back to demold. So it's been a couple hours longer than necessary, but uh, we were doing some other things around the shop, so we're ready to demold. Um, just like our vacuum bagging video, we usually just start at a corner. Sometimes the peel pry will come up with the bag and everything else. And we're getting some sticking right here because the net actually touched the uh, carbon. So as you can see, making it on the mirror, the finish of the part, almost gives you basically a mirror finish. So you can see the reflection of that, the light where it hits the carbon. So that's about it. Uh, not really too much to it. Uh, a lot of little tiny nuances like if you get a hole in the bag or anything like that. Um, but the steps aren't terribly different than vacuum bagging. The net's the big one um, and then obviously a different epoxy. But otherwise it's you know pretty straightforward especially on a flat panel like this. So any questions on anything definitely leave it in the comments below. Also if you like the video please subscribe. Um, I'll do a couple more uh, composite related videos. Um, and again, any questions, let me know. Thanks.